the study, the Bible study title is the Bible is God himself. Now, we take our text from Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4 to 6. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his feast? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Now we came with a series of questions in verse 4 of Proverbs 30. Say, who has ascended into heaven or descended from heaven? Who had created all things? Who gathered the wind in his fists and gave boundary to waters and established the earth? What is his name? And then what is his son's name, if we can tell? But then, amazingly, he answered us in verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen. In all the questions he asked in verse 4, he gave the answer in verse 5. Give the question, gave us the answer. Says that it is the word of God that had ascended up into heaven. Is the word of God that descended. That the same that came down is the same that went up. Is the same that created all things, both visible and invisible. And that this one is whom we are to put our trust in. We are to trust him. God wants us to trust him. We have to believe in him and not to doubt him in verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Say, don't add to his word. Don't take away from it that the word of God is God himself. There is no else. Say, so don't add anything to him that we should receive him is what he's saying to us. We should receive him as God himself, the true God, that by the word of the Lord where the heavens made, he did all. Where is he in the Bible? That in Bible is God himself. That's why he say, anyone that add to it, he plagues written in this book shall be added unto that one. Anyone that take out of his book, his portion will be removed from the book of life of the living God. He has no inheritance because this is the inheritance. And so he says that what is his name? And what is his son's name? Because if you know the name of his son, you will know his name. That is the same person that created, is the same one that descended as the son of God, as the truth of God, and that he is God himself. Amazing. What a wonderful God we serve. That's why he came. So that we'll know him, the only true God. Now he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And so that's why the Sostra spoke this when he put his word in his mouth in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither is son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? 
Or had he spoken and shall he not make it good or make it to happen? It says he spoke. It was done. Every word of God is pure. He said, put your trust in him. He is not a man that he will lie. As he said, he will do what he said. And so that's what the sorcerer Balaam said when the Lord put his word in his mouth and he said, say what you must say. Then Balaam, Balaam confessed, as the scripture says, every knee shall bow. Amen. Every tongue shall confess that the scripture is God himself. He is not a man. He is the word of God. The awesome God that descended. He says it's the same word of God that was made flesh, came down. The same word of God is the almighty. There's none. He has all power. He want us to receive him as God. Now, when he came to them, when he gave them the word in the wilderness, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Verse 12 to 13. Moses said to them, to the people, and the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. Say, when he spoke to you in from the midst of fire, out of the midst of fire. You did not see any shape. You didn't see any form. The form you saw and heard is the word. The word alone, verse 13, and he declared unto you his covenant, the unremovable covenant, which he commanded you to perform. He commanded you to keep this covenant, his covenant. Is the covenant keeping God. He says, and he declared unto you his covenant, even his word. Say, my covenant that will not break. Even the word I have spoken. Which he commanded you to perform. Even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. He delivered them to me, so I receive it. Moses said, and I deliver it to you. That which I receive is what I give to you. No more, no less. Don't add to his word, lest you be found to be a liar. That this is God himself, your God. Forever. It's a covenant. And so keep this covenant. Then you will prolong your life. And so God wants us to keep this covenant that he made. Which covenant is his word? Hear more in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto you, unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness. With a great voice, he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. He added no more. So if God did not add, he says, see that we don't add, lest we be found to be liars. That he is, he is God himself. That anyone that comes to this God must believe that he is God. That we should receive him as God. That if we turn away from him, who is that God we are going to meet? Where is he? How does he look? Don't you see we are living in a bubble that is going to burst? We are deceived is what he's saying. He said that he added no more. He gave you assurance that he is God himself, and that all we need to do is to receive this covenant that he delivered unto me, Moses said. 
as your God, the true God. That if we turn away from this God, we are taking a risk, everlasting risk of deception. That one will say, yes, I'm going to meet God when I die, be not deceived. There is not another God. He said when he brought you to the mountain, he spoke unto you. In the midst of the fire, you heard his words. You didn't see any similitude, any shape. He not gave you the same word in the scripture, which is the Bible we have today. How did the Bible expand it beyond the ten two tables of stone? It's true. People who believe, who receive. Moses received the word, then he became a prophet of the word. Other prophets came, they received the word, then they testified of him. So the, we started the growing. The apostles came, they received the word. St. Paul says, that which I received, the same I delivered unto you. And so it, Moses said, this is what I receive. He wants us to receive him as God. Then we preach him and deliver him to other people. And so that's why he is calling us in this ministry of Bible revelation. And so that he is God himself. You know, some will say, I'm going to meet God. I, when I die, I meet God. If you don't meet God while you are alive, then it's the God of imagination we are dealing with. That he says that God brought you to the mountain and spoke to you from the midst of the fire so that he would delete imagination from you. Amen. He would delete every graven images, all the gods you knew in Egypt, he would remove them from you. And then in the land of Cana, you are going, you will not entertain the fake gods those are worshiping. So that you will keep his covenant. And then you will be alive. And so that's why God came. And here what the apostle wrote concerning the Son of God when he came to us, when he descended in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation, that it is God himself that descended in the Mark Christ Jesus, as the Mark Christ Jesus. He said, to wit, not another, God himself, was in the man Christ Jesus, reconciling the world to himself, which God, the word of God, that it was the word that was made flesh, made a human, that the word is God himself, as he said, he said he's coming, and see how, this is how he's going to come, he will come through a virgin, gave sign, and says, this is how you will know. A virgin will conceive without a man, knowing a man, and then he will give birth. And unto his son, then the prophet says, unto us a child is given. Unto us a son is born. His name is wonderful. He said, who, who, do you know the name of this God that descended? He said his name is wonderful, amazing. He is that counselor that will cancel you. He is that almighty. He is the everlasting father, the unremovable. He says that he came to reconcile us to himself. God himself, the scripture, came as a human. The word was made flesh. Is there anyone who said it's not so is an antichrist? Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. Is every one of us should be reconciled 
to this God himself. Which God? The word of God. The Bible. That he is God himself, the apostle says. We beseech you. We as ambassadors, we are speaking on his behalf to you. He sent us to testify of him so that when we preach the word, then you receive him. As many as receive him, then they have entered into this God. This God has entered into them. Amen. Power enter into such one because he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy because he is God himself, no greater than every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Amen. Let this God himself enter you. Mm -hmm. The God of the Holy Bible, let him enter you. That we all those who are telling you there is some God somewhere you are going to meet. How does that God look? What is his shape? That's why he says, how is this God that created? Well, how does he look? Who are you hoping to receive? But well, the scripture said to us that we should receive this God. That we all should look unto him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. We see Jesus. We see the word of God. Moses says, you didn't see any similitude. You only had a voice. And every word he spoke is what he wrote in the stone tablets and delivered them unto you. Now you can serve God. You can serve the living God. You are no longer strangers to him he has brought you near to him now he said this god now came as a human to bring us near to him both jews and gentiles what an amazing god we serve that god came as the man christ jesus that's the good news that's why we have hope today we can rest and be rest assured that he is not a man that he will lie he said it by the prophet, he fulfilled it. He said, I'm coming, he came. Again, he said, he's going to die on the third day, he will rise again, he did so. He's not a man, he is God. The scripture cannot lie. Every word he says, he said, they are pure, they are true. Take it as God himself, unchangeable. And so he says that God truly came as the man Christ Jesus, as he promised through the prophet, which God, the scriptures, so that we can lay hold on this anchor, this sure word, and then we will not be drifting. And so that's why God is come to us to preach the truth to us so that we can receive God today while you are alive. That this God is with us. Amen. Please be reconciled to him. Amen. Now, he made a promise to Abraham. And listen to what he said. The scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 15. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater he swear by himself. Are you hearing? He said when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by any greater than himself, he made himself the covenant. What covenant? Verse 14, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply the scripture locked up. He said he gave him the, the word. Gave him the scripture. Gave him the word. Please receive him as God. He said there is no greater so God that made his covenant with Abraham. And pass on to Isaac and to Jacob that this is God himself. I am God himself verse 15 and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise see abraham discovered that he is god himself he cannot lie what he said he had done 
He made it good. He promised him that he's going to give him a son. He did so. He promised him everything he promised came to pass. He said, Abraham, after he had patiently endured, please endure. How do you endure? Continue. Jesus says, if you continue in me, you will know the truth. He said, because Abraham patiently endured, continued, he obtained the promise. He discovered that God cannot lie. The scripture said it, it is so. That the word that came to Abraham, he said, come out from your father's house, come, follow me. I'll bring you to a land, the land I promise. And he fulfilled the promise. And then God did this so that we all will live by faith in him. We will trust him as Abraham did. Then we all who trust in him are now as the faithful Abraham that believed the scriptures, that took to the scripture as his God, that you also can receive the God of Abraham. And that the God of Abraham is the word. You also can receive the word of God as Moses. Moses said unto them, you saw no similitude, you saw God. Then you receive God. Please receive him by faith. Then when you receive the word of God, you have received God. Then you know more thoughts to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And uh, those who are lying away to deceive, say he couldn't deceive Abraham. He waited patiently. He waited for this God and this God fulfilled the promise he made to him. The same God has made a promise to you and to me. What promise? Hear more in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. He said, this is the promise. God promised the ultimate promise that on the whole world, anywhere, anyone receive him, he will put God in that person, with God, the word, the covenant he made which he said there's no greater. Then he made this covenant with Abraham. Now he says that this is what he's going to do. Then everyone that now receive him, then he will become their God, and they will become his people. That the Bible will not become their God, that person is God, and then the person become a person of the true God, Amen. of the Holy Scriptures as Abraham. Sure and steadfast. He says, that person, no man, no one can pluck it out of his hand. Nobody can pluck such one from his hand. And so this is the promise God made. He had made it, he will fulfill it. If we be willing and obedient, he said, we'll eat the good of the land, we'll eat this promise of God. And in verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So everyone now will know God. So manipulations will end. Nobody will manipulate each other. No one can manipulate such people anymore whom he had entered and they have entered him. And so this is why he says God was in the mind Christ Jesus preaching God, preaching the word. God was in the apostles preaching God. Who? The Bible. He said, the spirit of the scripture enter you as a promise, you fulfill that promise. What promise? You will know him. 
you will know that he's the only true God. There's none else. There's not another. And so someone who say, oh, no, preacher, I don't believe the Bible is the true God. You are taking a big risk. Because the God that they are telling you of, you don't know how he look. Where, you gonna, where, have, where have you seen him? He says that this one which we have seen, which our hand has handled of the word of life, the apostle says, the word was made manifest and will beseech you. We testify of him to you so that you can have fellowship with us, that truly our fellowship is with the true God. The true God is this book. All others are lies. Say we are testifying to you so that you can also have fellowship with us. We are in fellowship with God, the true God. Is uh, is an awesome fellowship. Says as he is, so are we in this world. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You can become a child of God today. Now he says that Abraham endured, so he obtained. So please obtain God. He came and he was not staggering anymore. He now discovered his God, that the scripture is God and that the scripture cannot lie. That even the sorcerers said so. That God is not a man that he will lie. When the king of Moab was wanting Balaam to change, he said, you didn't curse them at all. You blessed them. He said, yeah, they are blessed. That scripture. Who blessed them? God. Which God? The God of the Bible. Saying blessing, he said when there was no greater to bless or make a promise to Abraham, he made promise by himself. So when Balaam came to cause the Israelites, said there is no divination enchantment against them. The shout of a king is among them. Their God is with them. They are blessed. Yes. The most blessed is among them. Let receive this blessed God that will bless you eternally. Say, so once you receive him, you are blessed as the faithful Abraham. Once you receive him, you are blessed as Jacob. Even Isaac said to Esau, who came? He said, Jacob. He said, yeah, he is blessed. Amen. Oh, let this God enter you. And so that's why he's calling us. Don't go into religion. Religion is teaching you that someday when you live and manage your life, maybe you behave well in this world and then he will receive you. Who is going to receive you? The scripture says, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. That's what he said. Receive the scripture as God himself. Since everyone that receive him, they move from strength to strength. They grow. When they keep drinking this sincere milk of the word. And so he says that if we are talking of God, we should engage with God. That who ascended, who the same that descended is the same that ascended. That it is God that came to become human. It is the same God that we have today. And it's not another. That as he said, he's going to return to where he came from. He was made a human, so he returned to God himself. And so today, we don't look for God. We won't say who's going to bring God down for, for us or go to the deep and bring him up again. The word is near you. Even the Bible which we preach Amen. in Bible Revelation Ministry. That the Bible is God himself. Is anyone that ignores this God, there's already a judgment. Say that God is going to judge the whole world by this true God, by raising him from the dead. And he gave assurance to everyone that this is God himself. Jesus says, I have power to lay down my life, power to take it. No man can take it from me. And then we ignore this God himself who went to the grave and he came out from the grave or to give us a full proof that he is God. And then there's not that know that. So please let this God enter you. He says, if he enter you, he will give you life. Amen. 
Amen. You can never perish. He's not a man that he will lie. Receive God today. And then when you depart from this word, God will be with you. You'll be with God. Amen. He says someone said he, the person has gone to be with the Lord. <coughs> if you receive this Lord. That the Lord, our God, is one. Jesus is the Lord. And so the scripture teaches us that he is Lord. He is Lord of our soul. He has risen from the dead. And death has no more dominion over him. In that he died, he died once as a human. In that he's alive, he's alive unto God forever. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that the Bible he is God Himself. Let's pray to Him. As we have listened to Him, He said, You also can pray to Him, then He will grant you His petition, your petition. As the scripture has said, that anyone that calleth upon Him shall not be ashamed. So pray in His name and pray to this true God, and the true God will answer you. He will answer you as he answered those who were before us. He will answer you tonight. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Almighty Father, Savior, Father, eternal Father, spirit. Father, we, thank you, Lord, we thank you for bringing us to the true God. Thank you, as you, you told Lord, Moses to bring all of them to the true God. And they came to the true God. And the true God spoke to them. You have brought us to the true God. Tonight, that we all we we'll look unto the true God with an open understanding. And then the God of the Bible will be changing us from glory to glory to himself. Oh, Father, keep changing us. Change us to yourself by your spirit. As we keep looking unto Jesus, to this perfect law of liberty, change us. Change us from vanity. Change us and write your covenant in our heart. And so shall he be, because so you said that that's what you're going to do in those days, even in our days. Hallelujah. Amen. Message as the the Bible is God himself. Let us pray that all of us will come to that knowledge, that understanding, so that manipulation can end, because the Bible says, my people perish with lack of knowledge. If we don't know that the Bible is our God, will be manipulated, will be deceived, will be, will, be, will be taught many other doctrines. So we are going to pray that God will help us, that this word of God that you receive will help us to stand on him because that's the part to stand because without this knowledge we find that we are very filthy. That's why God came in the beginning to say it's about the word of God that has come to me and you to purify us. He say, what can a young man use to clean himself? It's the word of God. So let me pray that this word of God received will purify every one of us begin to pray. Almighty oh, Father heaven, eternal spirit, we are praying unto you, God, that your word will purify our hearts, 